Video 2 in the series on growth and development of the skeleton reviews the osteoblast, the only cell in the human that makes bone. To understand bone formation, be it membranous, enchondral, or lamellar, one needs intimate knowledge of the physiology of the osteoblast. Mesenchymally derived, it creates the skeleton. In so doing, 9 of 10 osteoblasts die providing products for the process. Most of these remaining cells become osteocytes, 95% of the cells in the skeleton. The few remaining cells line the endosteum of all bones. This information is critically important for the understanding of normal growth and has wide clinical application across the entire spectrum of disease. We focus on rapidly produced woven or membranous bone, providing mechanical stability within weeks in fractures, stress reactions, acute infection, and aggressive neoplastic processes. You should remember the following about the osteoblast. It develops from mesenchymally derived stem cells, which express master transcription factors CBFA and RUNX. This programs the cells to enter the osteoblast pathway. Cytokine promoters of the process of osteoblast derivation include bone morphogenic protein, platelet-derived growth factor, transforming growth factor beta, and hedgehogs, sonic and Indian. With origin from the mesenchyme, the osteoblast can modulate to other cell lines, including fat, cartilage, fibrous tissue, and muscle, given the right environmental and cytokine-driven signals. The function of the osteoblast is to make bone and to control mineralization. Its products include collagen 1, osterix, bone morphogenic protein, bone sialoprotein, osteocalcin, osteonectin, and osteopontin. The images seen in the following h &E slides may help you to understand bone formation. This is clinically relevant, particularly in understanding osteoporosis, which is defined as a skeletal disorder characterized by compromised bone strength, predisposing to an increased risk of fracture. The differential diagnosis includes too little formation, too much deletion, or a loss of balance of both. Some defects of osteoblast function leading to osteoporosis include Genetic failure of collagen 1 formation, as in osteogenesis imperfecta. Genetic and nutritional failure of mineralization of collagen 1, as in rickets and osteomalacia. And the nutritional failure of cross-linking of collagen 1, as in scurvy. This is an h &E slide of active bone formation. The bone is on the left. and stains a mottled pink-blue, reflecting incomplete mineralization. The newly formed osteoid is unmineralized and stains pink along this osteoid seam. The cells involved in active bone formation are on the right. An osteoblast, looking very much like a plasma cell, sits adjacent to the osteoid seam. This cell has arisen from the pool of uncom uncommitted stem cells and, and has physically moved from a perivascular location to its working site adjacent to the osteoid seam. In doing this, it has changed morphology from that of a spindle cell which is skinny, flat, and has little cytoplasm, to its mature plasma cell appearance. The osteoblast, indicated by the blue arrow, takes up the hematoxylin, stains blue, and is termed basophilic. The cell contents include the nucleus, 
the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi apparatus for excretion of the osteoid, which is mostly type 1 collagen. The osteoid takes up the, uh, the pink aosin and is termed acidophilic or eosinophilic. The collagen is excreted as procollagen subunits that are assembled into the triple helix outside the cell. Vitamin C is necessary for the production of normal collagen 1. Deficiency of this vitamin produces a form of osteoporosis. The key intracellular step involves the hydroxylation of prolysyl and lysyl residues. So when collagen, the main building block of bone, is deficient, osteoporosis results. The differential diagnosis of osteoporosis includes a group of inherited conditions characterized by abnormal collagen, osteogenesis imperfecta. These children have osteopenia and bone fragility leading to pathologic fractures. Note that the osteoid at some distance from the osteoblasts is variably stained. When first deposited, the osteoid uh, is immature. And over the following 14 days, there is a complex biochemical preparation of the collagen to prepare it to accept the mineral, calcium hydroxyapatite. Crystallization occurs around 14 days and involves the interdigitation of hexagonal plates of crystal in the interstices of the triple helix of the collagen. On the h and &E slide, mineralized bone stains more deeply than the immature, freshly deposited, and unmineralized osteoid, hence the purple, purplish hue. The mineralization process actually takes many months to be complete in an area of new bone formation. When this process of preparing the osteoid is deficient, another form of osteoporosis occurs, wherein which the osteoid produced is not biochemically ready to accept the crystal. Rickets and osteomalacia are the prototype disorders of this form of osteoporosis. Osteoblasts in this setting of rapid woven bone formation live a short life of three to 10 days. Of all the cells lined up in this bone making seam, only one in 10 is selected from its apoptotic dying peers to become the resident osteocyte. The osteocyte is responsible for maintenance of the bones surrounding it. It communicates with its immediate neighbors by cellular processes which occupy an interdigitating net network of canaliculi. This system allows coordination of the maintenance of bone. At this early point in time, these canaliculi are not yet fully developed or seen. Once in place, in mature lamellar bone, when taken together, this collective of very narrow passages is part of a huge surface area, providing an interchangeable pool of calcium, phosphate, and hydrogen ions for the short-term regulation of acid-base homeostasis. All surfaces in bone participate in this process, including the surfaces adjacent to the canaliculi, the endosium, and the surfaces of all the trabeculi. What are the characteristics of woven bone? This h and &E slide shows an overview and could be considered the prototypical image of membranous or woven bone. Half the space is occupied by randomly oriented trabeculi, which are interconnected and have many cells per unit area of bone. The collagen in these trabeculi is laid down in a totally random pattern, and at this point, there is little mineralization. Such bone is mechanically weak, and this appearance would be typical after three to four weeks of woven bone formation in an embryonal 
femoral cortex, in fracture callus, in any periosteal reaction as around a rapidly growing bone tumor, infection, or a stress reaction. The spaces are filled with a loose fibrovascular stroma. A collection of many small vessels. You see the red cells. These are the vessels. And they're surrounded by perivascular cells, which vary from spindled and then change to plumper and plumper and plumper cells, which are in fact undergoing osteoblastic differentiation. These are the stem cells that have received the signal to become osteoblasts. This is the cellular engine that produces bone rapidly where needed throughout the skeleton. This slide and this video shows the very first steps of this process in which membranous bone is laid down. The subsequent unfolding sequence is remarkable in that the weak open mesh is strengthened, first by calcification and then by a slower fill-in of subsequent weeks over subsequent weeks with much stronger lamellar bone. Stay tuned for subsequent videos. The key differences between the osteoblast and osteoclast have to do with lifespan and efficiency. The osteoblast lifespan varies from days when making bone rapidly, as in this video, to weeks when lamellar bone is formed, to months or years if the cell becomes a resident osteocyte. The osteoclast, on the other hand, is a shooting star lasting just a couple of days. It's a mobile, acid-laden cell that moves along the bone surface or tunnels within the cortex, deleting so much bone over its short lifetime that it takes 100 to 150 osteoblasts to replace it. The bone removal takes days, and this is the key, the replacement, the replacement takes weeks to months. This is clinically relevant, for it is the basis for the development of the stress reaction, which may lead to an actual fracture. The clasts are turned on within hours of the initiation of the unaccustomed stress, and within days are leading massive amounts of bone, creating a, a zone of regional bone weakness within a week. It takes weeks for the new bone formation initiated by the innumerable osteoblasts recruited to make enough bone to correct the problem. It is in this time of substantial weakness of the bone that the symptoms develop. The next two slides to summarize the take-home message from this video. And I will not repeat the uh, text in the, the interest of time, but review it, please. In this video, you have seen osteoblast function as shown in early woven bone formation. The clinical takeaway is that defects of osteoblast function are part of the differential diagnosis of osteoporosis, one of the most prevalent problems that we face. The osteoblast expresses collagen in multiple biochemical steps that are genetically pre-programmed. Defective genes underlie osteogenesis imperfecta and X-linked dominant hypophosphatemic rickets. Metabolic disorders related to nutritional deficiency underlie the pathophysiology of scurvy, rickets, and osteomalacia. This completes the video on osteoblast function. Knowledge of the osteoblast is integral to many of the concepts that follow.